right, everybody, welcome to this week's Quantum Alignment Show. And for those of you who have been waiting for the projector, this is it. We're going to be talking today about healing the inner child and looking at what do projectors need. I am always moved and really inspired to teach about projectors because it's been my experience in 21 years of doing human design now that the projectors are often the ones that have the most pain, that really battle conditioning, that struggle to really connect to see sometimes the value of who they are or why they are the way that they are, which is an incredible shame because our projectors are tremendous, tremendous resources for us. They literally have emerged in the last surge of human evolution as a new type, a type that is, that was created, that is created to manage and guide and direct the rest of us. And don't we need it? <laughs> so I'm excited today to really unpack some of the aspects of the projector nature to explore some of the things that are natural in the projector life story reframe some of your perception of yourself if you are a projector and really look at what perhaps do you need to rethink in order to begin the process of reclaiming your own projector energy and if you're a parent of a projector things you need to be aware of in order to support your projector in unfolding into the wisdom and the value and the power of who they really are. So let's get started. This is the first of, sorry, not the first, the fifth of a six part series about healing your inner child by design. Obviously we can't go deep into healing your inner child. My main goal right now in this series is to give you just some beginning reframes on what perhaps you need to think about and contemplate as you explore what might what you need to do to really bring yourself into deeper alignment with living true to who you really are true to your nature if you are really struggling with healing or releasing or reclaiming aspects of who you are i really want to encourage you to join one of our master alignment programs we have a new one coming up in a couple of weeks we're going to be focusing using the quantum alignment system, which is an integrated approach where we use human design and energy psychology, specifically EFT, to really explore those places where you may be carrying conditioning that's keeping you from stepping into your value and your power. In the upcoming master alignment program, we're going to be looking at your relationship with faith and source and how that relationship might be keeping you from living true to who you are. And if you're wondering, what does this have to do with being raised true to who you are with your parents? I'm gonna show you in just a minute, so keep watching. Sometimes when people watch these presentations, it's been my experience that they get triggered. So I just wanna, I just wanna bring this to your awareness because sometimes what happens as we go through this material, we oftentimes see the places where perhaps we weren't raised according to who we are, or we were judged or maybe criticized by our own parents for not being how they thought we should be. That's maybe a universal experience for, I would say at least for most people, certainly I would say for some of us, it's an even, it's, it's a pretty deep wound. And it's a wound that oftentimes sets the tone for our soul curriculum and what we're here to explore and learn because ultimately, no matter what your experience was as a child, you are a being of love, you are worthy of love, you are powerful, and you are valuable. And sometimes we have to go on a journey to remember that. When we look at children as parents, we're oftentimes looking at our children through a window. And if you can imagine that this slide is a window, and that this slide has four window panes, when we're seeing our child, if we can really understand through the lens of these four different pains what's going on with our children, and I'm not saying pain isn't hurt, I'm saying a window pane. If we can really know, if we can really look through each of these window panes and see that these 
window panes each offer us a perspective on how we can better see our children for who they are and what's going on. We can begin the process of being more deliberate and conscious with our own parenting for those of us who are still actively parenting or in the middle of you know, the, the process of bringing young people into adulthood. The first window pane that we're gonna look through is human design and that's really what we're gonna be exploring in this program. Your knowing your child's human design gives you key insights into how to more effectively support them in becoming a person that has a deep sense of capability, a strong sense of self-worth and understands their power and their lovability and who they are and why they're here. The second window pane that we wanna look through is child development. As we grow up, we have specific developmental tasks associated with specific ages and those at, at each one of those developmental cycles we have things we need to master in order to become resilient healthy adults and for many of us if we haven't learned during those specific cycles how to appropriately live true to who we are how to appropriately master the challenge of that particular developmental cycle that challenge comes with us into adulthood and it leaves us needing to resolve that challenge through our adult relationships which can sometimes create pain and dysfunction in our adult relationships so for i'll give you just an example every child goes through two distinctly different cycles where they learn they need to learn about becoming empowered self-empowered and appropriately powerful those two stages happen at the age around two to five, and then later on during adolescence. If you're not trained by your parents or taught or encouraged by your parents to learn how to appropriately express your needs for power and self-empowerment, and that's a core human need, we see that in the human design chart, then oftentimes what happens is you grow up into adulthood and you power struggle with people all the time because you never learned how to be appropriately powerful. Or maybe you become rebellious because you're pushing against people and you didn't learn how to really feel or become empowered or feel powerful. Each of the human design types has a specific journey with learning how to be powerful and that's usually tied to understanding your strategy. When we're looking at that in the context of the projector, it goes a little bit more beyond strategy. Part of the power of the projector is really understanding who they are and really knowing how to stand in their value no matter what. The third window pane that we look at through when we're looking at our children is of course our own personal conditioning. We bring our own stuff into the parenting arena and that oftentimes is gonna influence how we parent and our relationship with our child. And then lastly but not least, when children misbehave, they are misbehaving because they have unmet energy needs. They don't know how to appropriately ask for what they want and need sometimes because they're kids, they're little, they're still growing. When we understand how to interpret our children's behavior, what our children are really saying to us when they do some of the things that they do, we can see through the lens of knowing what their mistaken motivations are, what their unmet energy needs are, and teach them how to appropriately get their energy needs met. Then we support our children in growing into healthy adults that have the ability to ask for what they want and need and set good boundaries. One of the biggest needs that, that projectors have is a need for attention. And many, many projector children will seem like they need more attention than some of your other kids. And it's not because they need more necessarily, but they definitely need specific recognition and attention and even practice being invited by their parents. Because if they don't get to learn how to get their energy needs met appropriately by being recognized, by being and feeling seen, then they oftentimes will grow up with an, a sort of unbalanced way of expressing that need that can sometimes lead to projectors pushing and pushing and pushing for recognition, which does two things. One, it exhausts the projector and two, it pushes people away, not closer, which defeats the whole purpose of the pushing in the first place. Why do children misbehave? We have old beliefs in our culture that say children misbehave because they're spoiled. They misbehave because they're bad. 
They're just like their parents. They're jealous, needy, clingy, whiny, etc. They have ADD or some other kinds of psychological issues. If you have these belief systems about children misbehaving, if you think this is true and children misbehave because of these factors, then it makes you sort of draw the conclusion that if you have a misbehaving child, it's because you have a bad parent. That's oftentimes when we're looking through that window pane of personal conditioning, that's often a big piece of what we're looking at when we're parenting, because we don't want to be bad parents or perceived as bad parents. So oftentimes when we're parenting, we're kind of parenting because we're afraid of how people are going to perceive our parenting or judge our parenting, especially true when you go home to visit your mother, right? The real reason why children misbehave is, as I said, they have unmet energy needs and they're learning how to express those needs appropriately. Children need to feel lovable. They need to feel powerful and capable. They need to experiment and explore and they need appropriate attention and recognition. And if they don't get these needs met in appropriate ways, and notice that I keep saying appropriate, they don't get to run the household, they're partners in the household, right? If they don't get to learn how to get these needs met appropriately, then they devolve into misbehavior. And that misbehavior then becomes a source of communication. They're talking to you through their misbehavior because they can't tell you, hey mom, I'm feeling really disempowered in the way that this family is being organized right now and I need some appropriate power, right? Or they can't tell you, hey, you know, I'm feeling really ignored right now and it's making me feel like you don't love me. They can't say those things for the most part. So misbehavior gets our attention and it's a way that we can start going, oh, wait, there's something else going on here. There's an unmet energy need happening. What's going on with my kid? Here's the next thing that's just important. <laughs> to, hold on a second. Here's the next thing that's really important to understand. The nature of our relationship with our parents helps us build a relationship with source. Our parents inadvertently teach us about faith. Faith happens when we trust source. It, it's, faith happens when we stand in our value and our lovability and our worthiness. Faith, ha faith happens when we can suspend judgment of the mind, when we can trust our intuition, when we know the mechanics of co-creating or deliberately creating with the divine. The reason why this is important, particularly when we're talking about projectors, is that there's a lot of waiting involved for the projector. And there's a lot of doing things differently than most people for projectors, and that includes our projector children. And if you, as a projector, never learned to trust the process because somebody judged you or somebody said you're not good enough because you couldn't go do the chores that they gave you because you didn't have the energy or somebody didn't let you lead with that wisdom that's so inherent in you because they thought you were being bossy, right? If you didn't get that experience, not only does it of course hurt you and your own sense of self-worth and value, it even has the potential for you to trust God, for you to feel like you were create, created for a reason, that your life has meaning, that you're here for a purpose that only you can fulfill, and that in the unfolding of that purpose, you're designed to have all the support and love and help that you need. If we don't learn that from our parents, and this, is about, this isn't about criticizing or judging our parents either. Remember, they're conditioned too, and they're living out their own story. But if we didn't learn that, it oftentimes interferes with our own creative capacity. As I said, we learn faith very often from our parents as teachers. Remember parent, parents, if you think about it, parents are omnipresent, right? If you're in the other room and you open up the dining room cabinet and the dishes rattle a little bit in the dining room cabinet and you're not supposed to do that and your mom says from the other room, close the cabinet door, you think, oh my God, she's omnipresent, right? <laughs> so our parents are sort of omnipresent. They're, they're at least supposed to be unconditionally loving as best as they can. They're supposed to be empowering, encouraging. They're supposed to model for us what it looks like to be out in the world and what it looks like to live an aligned life. And of course, again, not about criticizing our parents. This is about exploring the nature of our relationship with parents because oftentimes it's a mirror for our relationship with source. And it helps us understand sometimes why it's so hard to let go and trust. All right, so projectors, are you ready? 
every child is going to get their parenting needs met differently depending on their human design. So all of your need for lovability, your need for capability, your need to experiment and explore, your need for power, all of those needs will be met differently depending on your design. And of course, it's going to be very different for the projector. Let's talk first when we look at the chart about what makes a projector. The first thing that a projector always has is an open sacral. So if you're a projector, you will have this square on your chart white. That means that you are here to take in and amplify workforce and life force energy. Here's the deal. Anything in the chart that's white, anything in the chart that's open is designed for you to hold that's energy where you are designed to hold that energy for the short term. So in the short term, you can amplify workforce and life force energy, and that can make you kind of superhuman when it comes to work and getting things done. But anything that's open in the chart is not designed to sustain that energy. So you can't sustain workforce energy. You can borrow it. You can use it. You can ride it. You can enjoy the fumes of the energy of the sacral for a short period of time. But as a projector, you can't hold it. And that makes the projector type vulnerable, most importantly, to burnout. And it means that as a projector, you don't have the same quality of energy as a generator or a manifesting generator. And as a projector, because there are only 20%, approximately 20% of the population who are projectors, it means you're in the minority. And the odds are pretty high that people in your life who are raising you if you were a projector, we're probably generator types for the most part. That's a common configuration, which means you were raised in the energy field of people who had this energy defined, who could hold it sustainably, and you couldn't. And oftentimes what happens in the projector experience is as a parent, we look at the projector, they can't hold this energy, and we classify them as lazy. You're lazy. Why do you need a nap all the time? Why are you, why can't you go do what you need to do? The other part of this open sacral is, is that the projector doesn't have initiating energy. Let's explore that for a minute. A projector will not have a motor to the throat. When we talked about manifestors and we talked about manifesting generators, the quality that makes the manifesting part of the manifesting generator and the manifestor is they will have a motor, one of these four centers in the chart, the will center, which is the little triangle, the brown triangle on the right, the emotional solar plexus, the red square, the sacral, and the root center, the bottom brown square. If you have any of these motors colored in and you have a direct connection from that motor to your throat through a channel that's colored in, then you have manifesting energy, which means you're either manifestor or manifesting generator. What that means is that you have a little bit of initiating energy. It'll be different depending on whether you're a manifestor or manifesting energy. You can be a self-starter, a go-getter, so to speak. But if you have an open sacral and you have no motor defined to the throat, your nature is literally purely responsive. And I'm not saying responsive in the generator type of way. I'm saying you don't get activated in the world until you get access to energy. And that access to energy comes from primarily recognition. And if you are, if you're being forced or encouraged strongly by your parents to go do something that's against your nature and doesn't and, and goes against the nature of your energy flow and you can't sustain it, it's not because you're lazy. It's because you don't have the energy for it. That's not the right thing for you to do. Your energy works differently than most people's energy. You can have a motor defined if you are a projector. And for the most part, you may have any one of these channels. You won't have all of them, but you may have any one of these channels defined. And that will give you access to a motor, but you still can't push with it because it doesn't make it to the throat center, which is the center for manifestation into action. You still have to wait for other people to get this energy activated. What it does mean for you though is this, if you are a motorized projector, you do have energy that you do build up inside your body and you probably need some kind of movement 
to get that energy moved out of your body. So it can be, you know, physical sport or walking or doing something. You can do things, you have energy. And especially when you get called out into action, you have extra energy, but you're still a projector. It just means you're a projector that probably needs a little bit of exercise when you feel it, when you feel the need for it. The non-motorized projector is a projector that has an open sacral and no motors defined. And certainly if you are the parent of a non-motorized projector, you have to understand that these are people who don't have the same quality of energy, who need extra rest, who need to be with you when you do work. So taking your non-motorized projector child out into the yard and doing chores in the yard with them helps them gain access to energy that they literally don't have. If you send them out by themselves to go do something, a chore outside, out of the energy field of the house, they might not have the energy for it. And it's not laziness, it's hardwiring. So oftentimes we label people who have projector energy as lazy or not being able to follow through on things. And it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with access to energy. A projector is a person who needs people. And energy is a premium for the projector. And if we raise projectors, or if you were raised to override your correct way to use energy, it probably left you vulnerable to burnout. And the burnout the projectors experience can be massive. This isn't just, eh, I don't like my job, bleh, right? This is like, wow, my body doesn't work kind of burnout. Wow, I have an autoimmune disorder kind of burnout. Wow, my adrenals are completely tanked kind of burnout. And it happens for projectors at very young ages compared to the other times when the rest of us burn out. Most of us, the rest of us burn out around 50 if we burn out at all. Generators can tend to even override burnout. Manifestors tend to burn out around 50. Projectors will start to burn out sometimes at their Saturn return cycle, 28, 35, 40. In that age range, they can't push, especially non-motorized projectors. They literally can't push. The body gives out and it doesn't sustain itself because there's no energy there and it's not personal and it's not lazy. It's incorrect use of energy. And understanding if you have a child like this, the unique nature of their energy and making sure you do not judge them for inactivity and you support them in restocking and replenishing their energy source is crucial for them to survive as healthy as, and, and grow into healthy adults that are able to sustain their energy in a healthy way. You may, if you are a projector, also have an ajna to the throat. You may have a spleen to the throat. You may have a G center to the throat. None of these three centers are not motors. So you will have an open sacral in any of these centers to be a non-motorized projector, or you can be a motorized projector, but no motor will ever make it to the throat. If you do, if you get a motor to the throat, you're not a projector, you're a manifester. So you need to have an open sacral and no motors to the throat. If you were going to put on a show and you were going to make, make a production, put on a show, put on a play, and you were going to use each type sort of as a metaphor for parts of the show being, being created and produced, the projector would play the role of the director in the show. The, the projector has a life purpose of guiding and directing others. So here we have our projector sitting in our projector chair, right? And they're guiding and directing. It is so inherent in the energy of the projector that they know others. It's like, uh, I have a, yeah, my, my first husband is a no motors projector and uh, he, he uh, used to say projectors are like human sheepdog. They, they're here to herd the humans, right? There's an innate understanding of how to manage people that's 
in the cellular structure of the projector that they will live out from the time that they are able to talk and start their journey of guiding humanity. My youngest daughter is a projector and one of the things that I, she's the only projector child I have all of my other children are generators and manifesting generators and one of the things that I noticed about her at a very early age was this managing and guiding thing was very, very natural to her. In fact, it was so natural to her that it was kind of dangerous. I had to end up locking the windows in the back of the car because at the stoplights when she was like two and three years old, she would roll down the window and start yelling corrections at people at the traffic lights when we'd stop. So she would yell at people, hey, you, why aren't you wearing a helmet? Don't you know you need to have a helmet on if you're gonna ride your bike? Or why are you smoking? Don't you know smoking is bad for you? So that natural guiding instinct has been very strong in my projector daughter. And of course I see this in other projector children as well. It's the innate wisdom of the projector. This is one of the greatest gifts of the projector. And if you have a projector in your life, one of the greatest things that a projector can bring to you is deep insights about how you could use your energy more effectively. This is the wisdom of a projector child. This is the wisdom of you as a projector parent. And here's what happens if you're a projector parent and you're managing and guiding your child, because you aren't really following strategy, which gets tricky with parenting, it's very easy when you're a parent, a projector parent for your children to perceive you as being bossy and controlling when you're not. If you're a projector child and you go out in the world and you're managing and guiding others, if you're not following your strategy, other children, other people are also gonna perceive you as bossy. It's a very common thing for a projector child to be judged as being bossy on the playground when in fact they're just living out their natural tendency to guide and direct others. The projector sees the potential of what could be. They hold the potential of what could be in their body, in their spirit, and they look at the world and they see what it could be and their natural instinct is to try to line it all up, make it better. But the rest of us, we hear it and we have it asked for it, we haven't recognized it, and when it comes out of the projector and it hasn't been asked for or recognized, we push it away. We don't hear it, especially if we don't understand human design and we don't realize, oh, this person is doing what they're here to do, and we're judging it instead. Every type has a strategy. The strategy for the projector is waiting to be invited and recognized. Okay, so the projector needs to be invited or recognized. I like to think of the projector as being the elected leader. And elected is a good word for it because elected means you get chosen. As a projector, you're not here to manage and guide and direct everyone, although you could. You know, that's the frustration, if you will, of the projector type is the projector looks at the world and is like, oh, why are we doing this? This is so dumb, right? But you're not here to manage and guide and direct everyone if you're a projector. You're here to manage and guide the people who elect you to guide them. And what determines whether they elect you is one really important piece, and it's this. They have to value you. They have to value what you have to offer. And the hardest thing for the projector, other than energy, which we'll talk about in a bit, is waiting for the right invitation. Not any invitation. You're too valuable to just accept any invitation that comes your way. This is about waiting to accept the right invitation. The one that feels good and correct and juicy for you, okay? Not just any invitation, but the right one. And that's important to remember when you're a projector because sometimes when you're a projector, there's a lot of time between invitations and the waiting part is hard. So you accept any invitation that comes your way and then you can't figure out why it didn't work out because it was an invitation, but it has to be the right invitation, the one that feels juicy and amazing. 
You don't have to be in, invited to the little things in life. You don't need to be invited to go out to dinner. You don't need to be invited to fill up your gas tank in your car. You don't need to be invited to do your laundry. You're not a generator. Generators have to respond to all of that all the time. You're here to be invited into the big things in life. Friendships, romance, career work opportunities, where to live, not the little things. And so for the projector, sometimes those big opportunities don't happen that often. Sometimes it's a year or two between the big invitations. And you'll know it's a big invitation because first of all, when you get it, it'll resonate through your whole body. It's almost like you hear it like, dong, oh, there it is. It's the guiding force that puts you on the right path for you to fulfill your destiny and your purpose of being the elected leader of a tribe or a group of people, right? In between the big invitations, the projector has one important, well, actually two important jobs. The first job is take care of your energy. Rest, restore, restock, replenish, regenerate, rejuvenate your energy because energy is a premium for you and you're designed to have pauses in between those invitations because you're supposed to be resting so that you're ready for when the next invitation shows up. And sometimes that next invitation doesn't show up if you're tired. And that's so important to understand because projectors sometimes forget the rest part because we're so deeply conditioned, you're so deeply conditioned that when to, to do something, anything, and remember you have an open sacral. So when you're waiting for the next big invitation, your open sacral is still taking in all this workforce energy. And maybe you're even receiving judgment from others about, well, why are, what are you doing? You're just resting. What are you doing? Get off the couch. What are you doing? You need to go make something happen. Nothing's happening in your life, right? If you don't take those opportunities to rest and restore your energy, it actually slows down invitations because the universe is so infinitely loving that it knows that you're not ready for the next invitation because you're tired. So you don't get an invitation and you think, wow, nothing's happening. And then you get more desperate and then you burn off more energy because now you're freaked out and worrying instead of going, okay, I'm in a rest cycle right now. This is a time for me to regenerate, replenish my energy. When we parent reflect uh, generator, sorry, when we parent project your children, we have to understand that in the regular life cycle or the lifestyle of a projector child, they need time off to regenerate their energy. Uh, my projector daughter, and she's got three motors defined. So she's a motorized projector. She has a lot of energy and when she's ready to do, she does. But she has to have a day off every week. We call it pajama day. And that's a day where she can, she does not have to do anything and she needs it. If she doesn't get her day off, she panics. She knows inherently that she's getting overwhelmed over her head. She's getting depleted and run out of energy. And we have to be sort of super religious about maintaining that one day a week for her to replenish her energy source. Because if not, she gets tired and she gets overwhelmed and she gets anxious if she's pushed too hard without that, that pause in her week. So you've got to have the rest cycle built into the space in between the big invitations. The second thing that happens for the projector is while they're waiting, they need to be following their bliss, doing everything that turns them on, that interests them, that excites them because you never know as a projector where the next invitation is coming from. And unconsciously, when you're in those rest cycles, the things that stir your passion, that cause you to be curious and interested in things, those are the things that are preparing you for the next momentum, the next cycle of momentum, the next big invitation. It's always interesting to me when I watch projectors really allow themselves to just be in the flow of their own inspiration especially when they're in the rest cycle, to see how magically the next invitation somehow seemingly draws on everything they just learned during that previous rest cycle. There's one other thing you have to work on if you're a projector, and that's this. You've got to have a strong sense of value, self-worth. Again, that desperation that comes from, oh my God, nothing's happening, I'm not getting an invitation, I don't know what to do, 
and that fear that nothing will happen again oftentimes causes the projector to accept or allow a crappy invitation, an invitation that isn't really a reflection of your true value and you get desperate to take anything that comes your way. You are designed to be elected to serve the people who get the value of who you are. And the way you know if that's true or not is the invitation is good, it's right, it feels right, it's delicious. And so remembering that you're not just about, you're not just here to accept the invitation because it came in an invitation. You're here to accept the right invitation, the one that reflects your value. And again, I find a lot of times if a projector is in a really big dead space, there's two things they have to work on. One, their energy, and two, their sense of value. Because of a projector that is strong in their sense of value, that really gets who they are and what they're here to do and what, the, what, the, what wisdom they have to share, a projector that really gets that is an incredibly compelling human being. Their aura is so profoundly attractive that if you are standing in their energy field, you won't be able to stop yourself from inviting them because that energy is so compelling. It's hard to remember that sometimes when you're a tired projector who's struggling to connect to your sense of value. And I just want to encourage anyone who is a projector who's listening to really explore those pauses in your life as an opportunity for you to heal your self-worth and restore your energy. Because those are the two things that really have to be in place for the right invitation, not just any invitation, but the right invitations to show up. All right, big thing. So wait to be invited before you share your gift of guidance and directions and others because it's too precious to waste on people who didn't ask, okay? not self i don't like the term the not self we'll call this the inauthentic emotional theme the per, every type has an emotional theme and in human design when we talk about emotional themes you know we talk about it as as, as, as if this is sort of some sort of inevitable thing that happens to you or you have your emotional theme and it's sort of a justification for sometimes not behaving very well in life i don't actually think that's true to me the emotional themes of the type is a way of communicating that something is needed, something's out of balance, some message, the emotional theme is a message that you're giving it yourself. And one of the challenges of every type is to learn how to correctly interpret what happens when you experience the emotional theme for your type. So the emotional theme for the projector is bitterness. And I will just say that whenever I do readings for projectors and they see that this theme of bitterness is on their chart, they're often very bitter that it's bitterness. <laughs> and it's not the most pleasant emotional themes. Here's the thing about a projector. And this is sort of the irony of the emotional theme of the projector. Bitterness is a very repelling energy. If you are a projector and you are feeling bitter, it literally pushes people away. It makes it difficult for invitations to come because you're energetically pushing people away with the bitterness. But bitterness is a, it's, it's a symptom. It's a message that you're giving yourself and learning to interpret the bitterness is really, really important. Bitterness is a signal that you are either out of energy or you're not valuing yourself enough. And if you feel those two things, you are most likely going to experience bitterness. By the way, when children are bitter, this is what they tend to say. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> if you have a kid that says that all the time, you might be raising a projector. And again, recognizing that it's not fair because they're tired or they're questioning their value. They don't have the energy to make it happen the way that other people do. Maybe they don't even have the energy to make it happen the way their siblings do. And now their siblings are getting all this recognition and kudos for being go-getters and the projector isn't, and it's not fair. And it isn't fair. Because if that's what's happening in the family dynamics, it means that the projector isn't being seen and valued for who they are. They're being valued for trying to be fake generators instead of being the projectors that they are. 
So bitterness is an indication that A, you might be out of energy, your tank is empty, or B, you need to work on your sense of self-worth so that you become the powerful, compelling force that you are created to be. The spiritual role of the orchestrator, which is the name that I like to use for the projector, is the orchestrator is here to anchor the energetic template of what we are here to create. They are here to scrub the energy of the world and heal the planet. They are truly evolutionary forces that are here to help the planet evolve. In that open sacral of the projector, that square we talked about at the beginning of this call, that openness allows the projector to be inherently wise about what's possible around what we could be building in the world. The projector holds the template of what's possible for the world. They sense it, they feel it, they know it. And part of what the projector does is they hold the energy template of what's possible together. I find that a lot of my projector clients are tired and they're not quote unquote doing anything. Well, part of why they're not quote unquote doing anything is they're not doing things like generators. They're laying on the couch, holding the entire energy template of the planet together. They anchor the grid, the subtle body, the subtle body energy field of the template. So if you go to an acupuncturist or homeopathy, uh, you go at homeopathy, uh, if you consult with a homeopathic physician, if you use essential oils, if you get Reiki, quantum healing, any of these kinds of modalities work on the subtle body or the energy template level of the body, right? The planet itself has a subtle body or an energy template. It's almost as if the orchestrators are sort of cosmic acupuncturists for the energy field of the planet and they're keeping it functioning at an optimal level. That's an enormous job and it's an esoteric job. So it's not one that we can really see happening, but I do believe strongly that this is why so many projectors are tired without quote unquote doing anything. Because it's not that you're not doing anything. You're working really, really hard holding this whole thing together. So here's our orchestrator, right? Holding, weaving, weaving the grid, weaving the template, holding it in place. The quantum purpose of the orchestrator is to hold the energy template of what's to come and to clear the vibration of the collective consciousness so that we can do the work necessary to make the template into manifested form. Bitterness, as I said, is depletion or low self-worth or both. And if you find that you are feeling bitter as a projector, it is crucial that you work on restoring your energy and let's talk about that for a minute. That means rest. And when I say rest, it means doing whatever it is that restores your energy. And if your energy is not feeling restored, you're not rested yet. There's no timeline on rest. There's no formula for rest. There's no things you should do to rest. The bottom line here is for each and every one of you who is a projector, your rest is whatever you need to do to restore your energy. And if you're laying on the couch freaked out and worried because you don't know where, you know, what's going on and what to do next and nobody's inviting you, that's not actually restful, that's depleting. Rest is restorative. It means you enter back into the world, restored, restocked, replenished with your energy. So bitterness means you need to rest. And then you also need to work on your value. You are worthy of resting because what you have to give is so unique and so powerful and has the capacity to organize and support and help the world at such a level that you deserve to own your value enough to allow yourself to rest and then only entertain the invitations that are worthy of who you really are. You're not lazy, you're powerful. You're not here for everyone, you're here for the people who need you. And you're worthy of helping those people and only those people if they recognize your value and compensate you and treat you accordingly. The challenges for projectors are of course self-worth and energy and oftentimes feeling abandoned by God. This is a big deal for projectors. They sometimes wonder, why am I here? 
what, why would God have made me this way? I have all these ideas and I can't make any of them happen until somebody comes and invites me. It's not about being abandoned by God. It's about recognizing you have a unique role that only you can fulfill in the way that you fulfill it. So some questions to ask yourself if you are a projector is do you value yourself or devalue yourself? And is that getting in the way of you allowing yourself to rest or do the right work? Is bitterness masking your value? Is the feeling of it's not fair keeping you from connecting with your worth? And do you have energy for the invitation? Very important questions for you to contemplate as a projector. If you are not living true to who you are, you're going to look like this guy. And you can look like this guy for a short period of time. In short cycles, the projector is amplifying the workforce energy of the sacral and is superhuman. Your capacity to get things done in the short run far exceeds everyone else. But you can't sustain it. And that's the piece that's really important to understand. If you enter into the right relationships, you accept the right invitations, you can live like this all the time. You get access to the energy if you enter into the right invitations. But if you don't, you're going to always be feeling like you're pushing rock up a hill, rocks up a hill. You're not here to work in the traditional way that we think of as working unless you get invited into it. And that's an important distinction to make. You can if you get invited into it. And you can certainly, as a projector, become an incredibly powerful human being. Some really powerful projectors that we've had in our current, more recent history. We have President Barack Obama, projector. Marilyn Monroe, projector. JFK, projector. Uh, Fidel Castro, projector. Carl, uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it at there. You can be a leader of the world as a projector. That's actually a good place for you to be. But you can't get there through being scrappy and working and pushing and shoving and fighting your way there. You get there by aligning with your value and taking care of your energy and letting your aura do the talking. As I said, the most compelling people I have ever met in my life have been projectors who are healthy who are vibrant and who absolutely get the value for they are. I'll tell you, I had a client one time, she was 50 years old, probably one of the most vibrant human beings I've ever met. And she was an artist. So here's this, this 50 year old projector, extremely vital, extremely vi vibrant in a career where traditionally artists are not that successful, don't make that much money, right? Had a very successful career, lots and lots of great shows and galleries, really was sustaining herself financially quite nicely and really kind of an unusual projector for me to do a reading for. And I finally asked her, I said, you know, you're a really unusual projector. You have energy, you're excited about life. You're not bitter. You keep getting all these great opportunities, invitations. What happened? Cause I'm thinking, oh, she must've had like some cataclysmic burnout and learned all this stuff. She said, no, she said, you know, I don't know what it was about my parents. They certainly didn't know human design, but somehow they got, that I was a projector and they taught me to stand in my value and to not settle for anything less than what I was worthy of. And they trained me to just be in my value and see what happens. And the life that she led, this magical life was pretty spectacular. And I'll say that in my experience of doing readings, Unfortunately, I find it really, really sad. I don't find a lot of projectors that are aligned with their value. I find that a lot of projectors have gotten a lot of negative messages about how they are in the world. If you're a projector, you're a people who needs people. You need people to activate you. And that's not laziness. And that's not lacking in gumption. And that's not bad moral character. That means you're here to have your life to a certain degree facilitated by people who get your value. And as a parent, it's totally okay for you to create those opportunities for your projector child, to invite their friends over, to artificially engineer some of the invitations, to help your 16-year-old projector child get a job. Maybe you have friends who have friends who have friends that connect them up. That's 
the way it works for a projector. That's not weakness. That's the way it works. So here's a picture of an authentic projector, right? And I, in my, in my fantasy life, the projectors are all living on purple pillows, right? Just radiating their wisdom out. And we go find our projector, right? And then we go consult with our projector about what's the next thing we should be doing. That's the ideal world for the projector, right? So challenges for the projector include the fact that the projector has non-sustainable energy. You need cycles of rest. Because the sacral center is open, sexual energy is also variable. And it's very important to understand if you're a projector or you have a projector teenager, depending on your values and your family, you want to help them understand that their partnerships and the sexual energy in their partnerships has variability with it, depending on who they're with. And so recognizing that it's not you, it's not you getting it wrong or you having a weird sexual cycle. It's oftentimes your projector, sorry, your partner. And remembering to really be aware that you're getting a lot of energy from your partnerships. And so for you to make a commitment to the right partnerships that feel juicy and good and aligned for you sexually, you have to make sure you like your partner's sexual energy. And then it's not you, it's the partnership. Projectors, just like manifestors, need to lie down and rest at least 30 minutes before they go to sleep. So our generator types, remember, they keep going and going and going until they get exhausted, and then they go to sleep. Projectors, manifestors, and reflectors too, all the types that have open sacral centers need to be in bed lying flat because that gets all that extra energy out of your sacral, lying flat at night and discharging that energy before you go to sleep. So books on tape are great for kids, music, medita nighttime meditations on tape, those kinds of activities while you're prone is important to help the sacral discharge their energy. Projectors need recognition. When you parent a projector, if they're not waiting for the recognition, give them the attention anyway, unless it's wildly inappropriate, but try to recognize them beforehand. Sometimes in parenting, especially when our kids are being really quiet and good, we tiptoe around because we don't want to interrupt a good thing, right? We're afraid if we say something or do something, then it's going to trigger all these wants and needs. You got to recognize those projectors before they need it because it trains them to allow themselves to see their value. It trains them to know they're worthy of being recognized. So recognize them. And when they don't wait for the recognition. Encourage them to flip it around so that they will. Parenthood sometimes can be challenging for the projector because they don't have the same quality of energy. So sometimes if you're a projector parent, get help, get a mother's helper, get somebody into your world to help you do some of the, the, the more high energy things that you might not always have the energy for as a projector parent. Again, work can sometimes be a challenge too. And so when you're looking at projector relationships, sometimes it's not the projector that's going to be doing the actual work that brings the money in. And sometimes they will, but it might go in cycles and that's normal. Again, projectors aren't necessarily controlling or control freaks, but they, they need to be recognized and to understand that if they're not waiting for the recognition and they're sharing what they know, they're not being controlling or bossing, they're in sharing their wisdom, flip your perspective around. If you are in a correct relationship, meaning if you're in a relationship where you invited the projector to be in relationship with you, which means you got to drop gender roles too, because men, male projectors need to be invited into relationships. Okay. That's important. And that's vital. Once you're in the right relationships, you don't have to wait for invitation and recognition anymore. That's an important thing to understand. Do not spend the rest of your relationship sitting on the sidelines, waiting for more and more recognition and attention. That doesn't work. Once you're in correctly, you're in. And if you are, a, you have a partner who is a projector partner and you're feeling controlled or overmanaged, flip your perspectives to stop seeing it as controlling and over being overmanaged and start seeing it as wisdom and guidance. And if it's too much, have a conversation about it. Probably what's going on, by the way, is that they're living out old pain from their, pre, from their parenting. I mean, from, from being parented. You know, sometimes if you don't trust that the recognition and the value piece will stay, then you continue to be kind of controlling because you've learned to push. And there's tremendous healing in learning to let go and allow yourself to be valued without feeling like you have to constantly manage everything. That's a big challenge in 
projector relationships, adult relationships, is learning how to trust that your partner will value you and he continue to value what you have to share. Projectors, as I said, in relationships, they need to be invited. They need alone time and very often do much better if they can sleep alone and it's not personal. So if you're a generator person and you have a, a projector love and they sleep on the couch in the middle of the night, it's not that they're leaving you to go sleep on the couch. They just need to be in their own aura because it's healthier for them and they sleep better. So don't let your projector sleep on the couch. Just get separate rooms. It's much nicer. Let them have a good bed. <laughs> Sometimes, as I said, they can feel controlling to others. Oftentimes that's in response to previous trauma as a child of not being heard and not feeling seen and heard. Sex and sexuality can be more immutable and unlimited, which can be fun and juicy, right? And again, as a parent, sometimes that takes a lot of energy. If you love a projector, this is true for whether it's a projector child or your projector lover, recognize them proactively, invite them understand their energy and don't judge them, be open to their sexuality, value their insights and advice, even if they forget to wait to be asked and support them in every way. And that means sometimes you're the one making the money and it's okay. Parenting challenges, your job if you are raising a projector is to raise your projector to understand their energy and to know their value to teach them the importance of waiting for the right invitation and to interpret correctly the message of bitterness, to recognize that bitterness means you're tired or you're struggling to see your value. Again, go to bed and lie down before you're tired, sleep alone if possible, take care of your energy, make sure you are strong in your self value. The open sacral sometimes has an energy theme of not knowing when enough is enough. That makes you super intense until you really burn out. So work on knowing when enough is enough. Recognize that you are very sensitive because you have to be to guide and direct others. So when things get dicey or intense or too much, not knowing when enough is enough, take a break. Because if it, you aren't knowing when enough is enough and things are getting intense in whatever situation you may be in, you're not resting and restoring and replenishing your energy field. Things are going to come to a standstill physically and even energetically. And of course, get good sleep as best as you can. And if you don't, if you're not sleeping well because you're picking up the collective energy because your sacral's not getting deconditioned enough at night, take naps. Projectors need naps and it's okay. It does really, really good for them. It's, it's important. And if you're a projector, give yourself permission to take a nap if you need it. And last but not least, and this is a whole nother class. And I have, if you go to the Facebook page, you go over to the video sections. Last year, I did a whole series of videos about burnout. And I taught a class called Bounce Back from Burnout, which is included in your Understanding Human Design Community membership, which I'll talk about in a second. Burnout is a big thing for projectors. And as I said, as a projector, you can start burning out pretty early in your life if you're working too hard, pushing too hard, not waiting for the recognition and attention, not taking care of your energy and not valuing yourself. So go watch those videos. There's a lot of great information there about the symptoms of burnout and how to heal your burnout, especially if you are a projector. The Understanding Human Design online community, which is an online community where you have live Q&A sessions with me, opportunities to show me your chart and I will talk through your chart with you. Places where if you're new to human design, you can learn more about human design. Places where you can connect with like-minded human design people. All of my general human design classes are in this membership community. That's hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of classes in here, actually thousands of dollars worth of classes in this Understanding Human Design online community. It is currently $27 a month. That includes access to all of those classes, access to all the Q and A's, access to special Facebook Live groups and Facebook groups, access to a phenomenal group of people that I just love, 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 love. If you wanna get access to all that for $27 a month, do it now because the price is going up on June the 1st to $35 a month. Take advantage of this discount We've got a big conference coming up in the fall. You're gonna have special bonuses just available only for our members. I just can't stress strongly enough, if you need support really living true to who you are, you wanna be in a community of people who really get you, join us, because it's amazing. So 
I hope this has given you some deeper insights into the projector nature. I hope this has given you some deeper insights into the value of who you are if you are a projector, the value of your child if you're raising a projector child, maybe even the value of your parents if your parents were projectors. I hope this also gives you some deep insights into the purpose of the projector, some of the pain of the projector, and has given you at least an idea of maybe where you need to start targeting some of your own personal healing and your own alignment with the value and the beauty and the power of who you really are if you're a projector. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate all of you and uh, be well, take care. Hopefully I'll see you in the membership. Bye.